This diver just dove 200 feet on a single breath, but they are about to experience a shallow water blackout. <laughs> Hello friends, Josh Munoz here, professional underwater photographer and freediving instructor. Today we're going to be covering the topic of shallow water blackouts, why they happen, what to do if you see one happen, and how to prevent them. We're going to talk about how low levels of oxygen affect our body and look at the signs and symptoms that our body might go through just before having a blackout. As a side note, this video is for educational purposes only. Watching this does not qualify you as a safety diver and you should honestly really consider taking a class to learn more about this subject. Final thing before we dive into this topic and you should take this very seriously. You should never do any form of in water apnea training if you are by yourself. Far too many people have lost their lives by holding their breath in the water solo. You should only do this stuff if you are with a trained buddy. I'm not trying to scare anyone or discourage someone from getting into freediving by showing these clips. Examples like this clip are great for learning because this video was a real blackout. This is exactly what they look like. This video is also a great learning tool because I did a few things wrong in this video and we're going to talk about my mistakes later on. Before we dive straight into blacking out, I need to explain a few things of what's happening to the body to trigger a blackout. When we hold our breath, we experience two main things. The first is that our oxygen levels start to decrease and secondly, our CO2 levels start to increase. We call this decrease in oxygen hypoxia. Once a diver starts to exceed their personal limit and essentially hold their breath longer than what they should, they might start experiencing some of these symptoms like uh, tunnel vision, you know, the curtains starting to kind of close and your vision being only focused on one sole thing in front of you. You might have a clouding of consciousness or you might have jittery movements and or very unfocused eyes. If you start to feel these signs or symptoms, surface immediately and breathe air. I do really believe that everyone's fully capable of holding the breath for three minutes before we start to exceed our personal limits, and this video explains why. Now, if we're watching someone experience hypoxia, we might notice a few things, like their lips starting to turn blue due to lack of oxygen. We might notice that their eyes are very unfocused and that their movement is a bit jittery and uncoordinated. In this video, this diver just held his breath for well over three minutes. As he comes up, you can kind of just tell that he's not all there. His movement's a little jittery, his eyes are very unfocused, and his lips aren't fully red. They're just slightly changed colors. After a few seconds, so of breathing air, he regains that kind of full consciousness, um, and then he's back to having some solid movements, a very good okay sign to his buddy, and his lips go back to normal color. This movement is something that we call a loss of motor control or an LMC. This loss of control, <laughs> is a late warning sign that can precede a blackout. Essentially, at this point, our body is having involuntary contractions due to lack of oxygen. Now, not all LMCs are gonna lead into a blackout, and if we can breathe air again, a lot of times our bodies will recover, but if we don't get to air soon enough, our LMC will turn into a full blackout. Blackouts occur when oxygen levels in the body start to fall too low. Specifically, we say when the partial pressure of oxygen drops below a critical level. If you want me to do a more in-depth video about partial pressure, leave a comment below. This topic is a little confusing and does need a bit more explaining. So once oxygen levels drop too low, the body starts to experience a blackout, the brain is basically gonna put the body to sleep because it needs to save all of its vital organs. This also needs to be said, people don't experience brain damage due to a blackout. If we're underwater, the brain knows that it's underwater and it's gonna trigger an automatic response called a laryngospasm, where our vocal folds are going to instantly contract and we're gonna push out whatever air might have been left, but we're gonna close our lips to ensure that no water gets inside of our lungs while we're blacked out. Now is the time our buddy needs to take us back up to the surface. To perform a rescue, we want to grab the diver just under their arm, keeping one hand on the chin and keeping the mask on their face. The other hand is just gonna be on the back of the head and we will begin to swim them up. Once at the surface, we want to ensure we keep their airways and chest above the water. The best method for this is doing a dosi do we now have one hand free, which we will use to remove any facial equipment, maybe a mask or a nose clip. We're gonna next start to blow along their face, just underneath their eyes. That's where our receptors are at to tell the brain that it's not underwater anymore. 
and we're going to talk to them using their name and tell them what to do. Breathe. Now, in the instance of this video, I completely failed to blow on the diver's face, possibly delaying that first big breath that we hear from the diver. That occurred about 20 seconds after the diver had blacked out. My lack of skill at the time could have entirely led to this blackout happening longer than what it should have. Experiencing a loss of motor control or a full blackout is not something that should be common within freediving. It is a consequence that can happen in freediving. When we dive though, we always want to be relaxed physically and mentally. We want to have proper form and technique. We want to have proper breathing technique. And of course, we always want to be free diving within our limits. I have to restate this because this is exactly why you should take a free diving class. I made a whole video about the things that you're going to learn in a free diving course and why they're so important to take. If the only thing you get out of a free diving class is how to be a safety, then that would be a successful class. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in comments below and subscribe to this channel if you want to continue learning more about free diving. Until then, happy diving.